on the press bar. Hello and welcome folks to Stewart Field where tonight we will experience the first ever girls flag football game here on HCTV. Central will be facing off against North Plainfield who is coming off of a heartbreaking 32-28 loss to Summit to open their season. I'm George Rickhart alongside HCTV's best Tyler <laughs> Rodriguez and tonight, uh, Tyler, tonight... We're gonna we're gonna get our first look at this central football squad, and there's a lot of excitement surrounding this team and this sport. And I mean, what do you expect to see from Central tonight? Well, when I talked to their coach, George, I said, "What do you expect to see?" And he said, "No idea what to expect." So, if he doesn't know, I certainly won't know, George. But he did say this team's been really gelling well together over the last week of practice. They had a game rained out last week, and we're able to add in some new concepts. And he said they're looking good and starting to gel. So. I expect a lot of energy in this first ever game. It's really exciting, George. Here we go. So the blitz is going to be immediate there, and that's Kendra Osai A. <laughs> We're going to get that real quick. Kendra Osai A. Kendra Osai, one of the captains. One of the of captains. She was in real fast, and that's how this game works. I mean, yep. it's it's immediate blitz, which is which is. You know, that's something that's going to be real hard for quarterbacks to deal with. That ball's going to have to come out real fast. And, Put her hands up. A good play right there. The immediate blitz again there. That was Duda who got Ooh. on that. Oh, and that one just slid through the hands. Yeah, George, you could see. So what they have is that hands. tall yellow cone is where the ball is, and then they have a two-yard buffer, or the neutral zone, I should say, where they can have the defense line up, and then they can blitz only with one. And the other team, the offensive team, I should say, can have one player blocking but they cannot use their hands almost defending like you would in soccer and basketball with your hands behind your back George right, that makes sense okay so here's a run and that flag is pulled out there right in front there that looks like Olivia Brunner and that was Brianna Mendez Reyes on that run there for North Plainfield we're still getting the names under our belt here as we just got the North Plainfield roster so bear with us for that So I believe this is this is fourth down. We see a four up there. So how it works, George, is there's the field is 80 yards. It's divided into four 20-yard zones. The team has four downs to advance the ball to the next 20-yard zone, and basically there's no change. So if you advance it, let's say, and you get you know 24 yards, then the next is going to be first and only what's that 16. Yeah, that makes so, sense. So right. so they decide so not to punt here. here on fourth down. Here's the run back here. That's going to be. Oh, moving through the defense oh, there. there. We go. There's some room for Central still on. They haven't grabbed the flag oh, yet. Now go. they'll finally get it. Angelina Tenor there. Angelina Tenor breaking through there. You know what sports she play, George? Soccer. Yep. <laughs> El Deporte Más Hermoso del Mundo, George. The world's most popular game. That was Angelina yeah. Tenor there. Very shifty. Had a lot of speed there. Yeah, looking quickness. forward to see what she does here in her junior year next year, George. Here to a good sophomore year coming off the bench for the Red Devils. So, see, next year you can step into that more important role there. Coach Short was just here with Reddington Middle School for a track meet, and I'm sure he's interested in, in seeing his players play out here today. So here's first and ten. First look at the central offense. That's Brunner's going to hand it off there real fast. We can't see the number on that, but that's going to be a touchdown for central right away, and that's Kyla Massenberg right there for Central. And they're gonna start with the early lead here. Two big plays, the big punt return, and then the handoff. Just like that, George. Just like that one play, the Red Devils have their first points ever as a girls football team. It's really amazing thing to see, George. 
never thought I would get the chance to, to announce another game here in the gantry, another football game. But yet, he, here we are. Yep, six points. And now how it works, George, is that they is can elect to go from the 20-yard line to get... They're going for three. That they're going for three, so they're going from the 20-yard line to try to get the three points. Ten is two, and from the three-yard line is one point. So here's Brunner. Brunner's going to throw. That one is off the hands of Crowicki. And I talked to Coach George. He said he doesn't think he would have gone for the three-point uh, conversion, but he said unless he, he sees some sort of statistical advantage. So I guess he liked something that he saw there. He's mainly going to be running running the, the offense there, Coach Joyce, for the Red Devils. And Tyler Rabel, the defensive coordinator. And they've had Coach Wolpozeski, another been very helpful with the team. George helping them out in the classroom, helping them learn concepts. Because, you know, George, they basically got – girls that have maybe never seen a football game so having her be with them in the classroom classroom show them what the game of football is like what the game of girls flag football is like has really helped this team kind of grow and gel well, done a good job so far already up six nothing there and i can see why you'd go for three there after two big plays like that i mean i think you just want to keep that momentum going some room there on the outside for playing field that looked like that flag came out back a ways can't quite tell who got that flag, but that was, I believe, Winter Thompson on the carry there for North Plainfield. Yep, number five, Winter Thompson there, and their QB is Maria Magallanas, number 22. So that's a first down as they get it into the next 20-yard zone there. It's a bit of a different setup, George, obviously, in the men's game, that fourth down rule. It's, it's two 24-minute periods, or two 24-minute half, sorry, so Tyler, we'll run. 22 is Lily Rose Augusti, Augustine. If you say so, George. I think so, right? That's oh no, you wait. Okay, this is this is throwing me off. <laughs> <laughs> nope, Tyler was right. I should have just listened to Tyler. Never forget that. <laughs> <laughs> it's breaking. Oh, Rio still got the flags on. Oh, they it was a uh, they got her oh, back. They got her way back there. Looks like at around the. Uh, at the That's 45, Brunner. Chloe Brunner there Chloe with Brunner. the the tackle, if you will. Well, being able to grab a flag is in some ways almost harder than being able to bring someone down. I mean, that's a very small target you're going for just on the side of someone's body there where you can't, you know, you can really hold someone up while tackling as opposed to this where you, you just have one shot at grabbing the flag and if you miss it, you miss it. Yeah, well, the game, obviously you can't move people, George, you know, so the game is a bit more technical in that way. And I see some flags here now. I don't think there might have been a neutral zone infraction or a false start. I couldn't quite tell who moved first, but. That blitz is quick. That wow. gets off. Oh, and that was almost intercepted by Tenor there as she was able to swat it down. It's gotten quite rainy out there. You can see it in the lights. Yep, the floodlights are the beautiful floodlights. New and updated, George, we have here. Yeah, they do look quite gorgeous. But you got to see, though, it's so much quicker, you know, some of these, the plays. With that two-second blitz, blitz right away. Plays are coming in really quick, especially now with this rain. It's going to be quick plays, quick runs, things like that. That's that's going to be how, how these teams are going to get the yardage. You know, big long balls are dropping back deep. And they don't have a lot of time to extend the play with that quick blitz, so it's not surprising. And there's the blitz from Osai, and she got it! The sack. Good sack there from Kendra Osai. She's been causing all kinds of problems in the center there for North Plainfield, and they've had very little time to throw the ball. Yep, George, she's, she's, been, she's been very good today, George, and you can see the the defense and offense of the Hunter Central Red Devils girls flag football team, a, a what they're trying to replicate a carbon copy of the boys team. So for you boys football fans, that you can see probably some similarities there with the aggression, you know, getting the red hats to the ball as they say, George, as you know, and, and the coverage and that they run both man, they run both zone. They like to change things up. It's going to be a handoff. It's able to stay upright for oh. a bit there and Tenor again. Grab by Tenor again. Tenor's all over the field early on in this one. Yeah, and that's what they said that first week, George. They had this this team got going a week late, George. So they were trying to get the the certification from the board of education. It happened a week late. So that first week when they came in, just assessing their athleticism, assessing their talent, you could see they have some really good athletes on this team, George Tenor. A soccer player, have a lot of volleyball players, Jordan Salas, Bethany Ramos, basketball players on this roster. And you can see that athleticism, you know, is, is very, very key in this sport. It, it's not too different from the men's game. As yeah, Coach George was telling me. 
mean, this team, this team looks fast, so and you can see it. Able to oh. step right again. Oh, and there's a deck there in the center. Oh, boy, right at midfield there. That's why they have the mouth guards, huh? As much as you think this is non-contact, and it's supposed to be non-contact, there are times where it's definitely... She's tough, though, there. Kind of let Massenberg there. Oh, she's jogging off, no problem. <laughs> yeah. She stayed up. I, she didn't even go down with that hit. Yeah, she only went to a little little squat there. But Both girls showed toughness. They both got up. And this is our new trainer here with Mr. P on frat uh, fraternity leave, or paternity leave, excuse me. And you know what the name of his new child is, George? I don't. Tyler. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. There you go. Yeah, Massenberg had the touchdown. There was another big run there, and she's able to stay up there. Hopefully she's okay. I mean, she was... She stood up, but she definitely took a hard hit there in the front. Yeah, those hurts, those collisions. That that can happen in any sport, but especially this here. Good little screen Krowicki play there. Krowicki's still going. Krowicki's going to be eventually dumped down right around the 35. Yeah, that should give them there the, the first down. There you go. Let's see how they still the say. Well. They still a second down, so. Uh, they're, just, they're just outside of it. I think they're a yard behind. Yeah, this team, they 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 really are a very organized for a team that's they've been practicing for three weeks. George is very impressive. And yeah, they look good out there. Here's Brunner. No blitz here. Brunner's so she'll run. run. Saw that she had room, so she took the opportunity to scramble a bit there. It's gonna be third down here. I was wrong in my assessment as to where it is. I gotta look at that green cone, not the other cones. So. Yeah. So they're gonna. They got another two downs here to get to the 20, I believe. Actually, it's offset. There's one on the 30 and one on the 25. Oh, there's, there's the 10. So it only goes to the 10, the end zone. So they just got to get to the 30-yard line here, George. This one's flipped to Tenor. She stayed with it. I thought they got her in the backfield. And they did. They did get her, but not before but the first she got down. first down. I thought that first grab, right? I thought it was a loss of yards, but... Apparently they missed. Yeah, it's different, you know, George. When you run at something, you can kind of just try to hide your hips rather than. In football, obviously, you know, if you're running, you can't really hide. But there she did a good job to almost move in sideways to not expose the flag there, George. Yeah, th that's definitely one of the big differences is with this being flag football. You know, there are different tactics to slide through tacklers or, you know, would-be stoppers that, you know, they're just not in regular football. Krowicki's got it, and they got the flag there fast. They have used her a lot on those screens to dump off passes like that. But they have a, they have a pretty uh, versatile playbook, and and that's that came down in this third week, George. They were supposed to play Westfield last week. It was last Wednesday when South Plainfield or North Plainfield played, excuse me, and they didn't. So they were able to add in some more concepts. You can see that versatility they have there. There's the attempt here, so he's going to give it to Tenor again. She's going to stay with it and, and go in on. for the touchdown. <laughs> Tenor is everywhere in this first quarter. Yeah, she's played amazing. And it is a 12-0 lead for Central here. So see where they're going to start with it for the point after. So it looks like they're just going to go out to the three-yard line here to get the one. Thought they would so maybe go. I think, I think we made a mistake earlier. Yeah, it was only a two. That was only a two. We're so used to looking at, at the, the football end, end the, zone, the main end zone there, but it's it's at the ten. Here's Brunner, looking. Oh. And Duda. Oh. I mean, maybe. I guess you can blame the rain for that one. It's a slippery ball. Yeah, right give now. her, give her, give her a break there, George. You know, it's wet. Yeah, it's wet. <laughs> it's raining out. Yeah, I get gloves on. No one's got gloves on, so. Actually, I don't know if the gloves are allowed, actually. Yeah. I'm looking through the rules, that's probably why. Definitely makes it a bit tougher. So, 12 nothing here with 11.07 to go in the first it's half. Flown by. I keep saying flown, first quarter. Flown by. And clock, clock does not stop. It runs. It only stops one minute to go in each, in each half, George. That's definitely, there you go. That's another difference from... The men's boys' men's side, rather. Is that 
know, men's football stops after every play, sit around and talk about it for a while. And in this, in this one, you know, it's just gonna keep going and going and going. So Saye again, another stop. Yeah, the Canucks realizing Osai has just been a big, a big threat, and and they're not able to drop back and pass the ball. It's been a lot of running plays here, and I expect to see that going forward. Oh yeah, I mean she's got speed and height, so it's going to be very hard to pass against her. I try it There's though. There's a throw up over. That one was nearly picked off. There was Levine and Tenor in the area. Hey, good play there. She's short, but Tenor can get up, though, George. Yeah, she's got some vertical there for sure. So here's third down. Everyone gets on sides. And it, it, it does change, so the QB... Seen a couple players throw the ball for North Plainfield. We've seen number 22, and we've seen three as well, and I don't think we have a number for three. That ball... Slid through the hands. This is a dead ball. It's fourth down, so I don't think anyone can pick that dead ball up. In men's football, normally when you miss a snap like that, it's going to be a fumble, but here it's a dead ball. This looks as though they're going to punt this one away. Central's got two returners back. Central, I'm trying, start, starting to think of what, what's more impressive for the Central defensively or offensively because they looked, I mean, they don't look like they can be conceding any points anytime soon, George. And on the other end, they're just so explosive with all their plays. Yeah, I mean, so far it just looked like North Plainfield has no traction at all. This one's going to be sent down. No one could quite grab it, so it's going to be a dead ball right there. So another slight difference from men's football is that once that ball hits the ground on a punt, it's a dead ball. So we have a spot it right there. And run it. So this is going to be, I believe, the longest field for Central so far in this one. Yep. Yeah, it is. They're probably the worst field position. They have about, what's that? They have got to get to the 50 to advance the ball to the next zone. So it's going to be about 19 yards to go for them here. Be a long, long way to go here on first down, but they got four downs to do it. Here's the snap. That one pops high. Try to hand it off there, and that stopped quickly there. There was three North Plainfield players right in there to combine for the stop. Looked like Brunner was trying to hand it off to Massenburg. So now even more to go here with less chances to do it. Yeah, so about sec second twenty there, so lost a yard there. But with the, with the explos explosive play ability they have shown, George, just don't think it'll be a problem for them. I wouldn't be surprised if they pick it all up right here. Here's Massenburg. Massenburg has a hole. Massenburg I breaking tell you? free. Massenburg Ooh. is gone. Gala Massenburg touchdown central. And oh my goodness, the speed in open field is just unmatched. Yeah, wow, well, it's so difficult to to almost tackle, get players down in this game, like you were saying, George. And when she can run like that, the difficulty to time and get that flag is not easy, George. Grabbing flag is almost harder than tackling, is what I've said. I mean, there. I mean, if this was tackle football, you know, you could just maybe jump or, you know, just extend your body more. You know, it looked like there was. You know, she got in the open field there. There was a couple of North Plainfield players that had a chance at her. You know, but because they have to grab that flag, they can't extend their body and maybe trip her up at all. And, and, and a lot of times in in men's football, you know, you see <laughs> you see a trip up at the end of a of a long run like that. So there's no tripping. Uh, that's that's your pro level analysis on that one, George. Oh, that was pro level analysis <laughs> right there. I was I was going off on a bit of a tangent. Didn't know what I was trying to say. I mean, I knew what I was trying to say. I just didn't know how to say it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think anyone knew knew what to expect, but that's certainly the Red Devils have been well kind of disguising their flags on those runs. And I said I thought she was gonna pick up the first there, George. Did not think she would go all the way, but it's been an average of probably two, two and a half plays 
every possession for the Red Devils, and they're coming up with points every every drive. I don't think they come up empty-handed yet. No, I mean it's every drive. It's just been a big explosive play that sent them down the field, and I mean, North Plains. They probably have less answer. time than possession, which and they're up by 18 points. So that's that's very unorthodox, I would say. That's the thing in this game. It it really feels like you don't have to completely control the possession to win it. You know the way you do in men's football. It does take well. Here's a oh, big one for North Plainfield. That's a big hole there, and that's going to be a touchdown. So North Plainfield's going to make it interesting. That's Kaylin Hester on that run there for North Plainfield. There we go. We got a game here, George. And we got a game completely. See what they do here if they want to go for the three and make it a one possession game, or if they're just going to get the one or the two. Uh, but that three points is is huge, George. I, I kind of like that rule there. It kind of allows you to, I mean, take a punt. It's like three-pointer in basketball. You know, when they introduced that, it made leads evaporate a bit quicker. And that has the ability to do it. But it looks like they're just going to go for the two here, George. Yeah, I mean, that three-pointer is definitely a pretty dynamic addition to this game. It would be really cool to see that in, in, in men's football, you know, a three-point opportunity off of a, a point-after attempt. But I – it's definitely a challenge to get. You're you're going from 20 yards back for that one. But oh, I mean, some trickery really here. That hard for Central to do that. It looks like flag, here, flag. the flag comes out. And it looks like she might have got in, or she was stopped. And it looks like Duda got her just before she got in. So we'll see what this flag's about. I think it was some sort of extension of the arms and the blocking, George, as they pointed to the offensive side. You cannot extend your arms to block in this one, Tyler. Why don't you read the blocking rules for us? It's it's definitely a it's it's interesting. Looks like you can block. You want me to read the blocking rules? I want you to read the blocking We'll be here rules. for a while if I read the blocking Not rules. All the blocking rules, just the well, blocking rule that we need to know. So what I've been told, George, is with the blocking, as I said before. You can block, but not with your hand. It's almost like you're screening. So think about it, hands behind the back, and you're just shuffling to try to get your body in that position. But you can't extend the arms and, and drive people back from point A to point B as you would in football. So, uh, men's football, excuse me, I should say. That's the, the difference, I think. And talking to Coach Joyce, you know, he says rules like that where you can't, it's not, it's not too athletic as much as strength. It, it makes this game more pure, George, and we've seen that. It's really just been about the football here. No physicality, nothing like that, you know? And I kind of like that. I don't know about you. Oh, I definitely like that. I mean, it's nothing to do with how, how big anyone is, you know, how strong anyone is. or well, it doesn't have to do with how strong people are, but it doesn't have to do with, you know, it, really the size, I think, is, the, is one of the main things here in, in, in men's football. Size is really important. Yeah. But in this, I mean, you can be fast and short and, you know, any size and, as long as you got the speed and quickness and shiftiness, like that's all that matters. It's really about the skill positions rather than the big brunt force up front that that men's football is all about. So there's Brunner. Brunner with some shiftiness there. She was able to get almost back to the line of scrimmage there. It would have been much larger loss. Yeah, it looks like they brought a couple in there, but only brought one initially. I say did well to block the one initially, but came came more in there and just like this is almost one minute one minute away till we reach that one minute pause before the end of the first half George one minute pause is definitely be interesting the one minute warning you should, I should probably say bit of a high snap that time there's Massenberg still up they eventually grab the flag there so minimal gain there that traction's tough there. When it gets wet, it's certainly slick out there, George. I could tell you that. That's for sure. It's been, looks like a little bit of the air has been taken out of the sails of the central team after that one score. So, be interesting to see if central can bounce back now. It's, it's like North Plainfield's got a, a decent amount of momentum. Looks like Kuroki's going to punt here. Has a soccer background, of course. Isla Kuroki and goalie here, Olivia Kuroki, played. And she also plays a JV goalie. Probably will be in for the starting varsity spot next year. And gets a good punt there. So gets a nice bounce. Except that doesn't matter in this yep. type of football. All that matters is where it hits. So it's going to be 
just inside Central Territory is where North Plainfield will start. Yeah, so they pause the clock before the punt, so now it's just going to keep running. And you can see North Plainfield telling them, telling everyone to get going here. Time drops quickly. And I guess now they stop at 43.8 seconds. And they stop right at the ready for play whistle, so they will get a little bit of time. Now it's going to go back, right, back to, to one and so I guess there's a bit of a clock error there. They have plenty of time for them to score here and make and things interesting going in the second half. Oh, and Levine did a good job there to slow her up and looked like Brunner came in for the finish there. It was a good defensive play by Central there to go. Oh, yeah, they, really, they cornered her there. It's a narrow sideline, like you said, George. You don't have that space to escape, you know, that extra 10 yards. So once you get once you go out wide there, you really got to be quick in making your move. And she hesitated, and you can see that's why this Red Devils did, good, did a good job of converge on her quickly. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, a big, there's a big part about you can see here with, with cornering people, it's it's important. You know, as you get down to that sideline there, Levine and, and Brunner totally work together on that one. Oh, fumble. Can't quite tell who who grabbed that, but it looked like Levine was in there again. It looked like she caused her to trip, but... Oh, she got the flag first, though. She got so. the flag first. That's all that matters. It cannot have 41.9. They got to get the ball to the 30 and only have two more downs to do so. So let's see what they're going to do here. Haven't seen too much activity from Osai on this possession for the Red Devils. Uh, but, you know, she's a threat here. Give her a little rest here. Osai can come back out. And, and she's really been giving the, the Canucks a big, big problem with her blitz. But they've been able to manage her well on this drive. And and they've been they pr progressed the wall the ball better certainly I think than the last couple possessions of course they had that one their fair they had their one explosive play George not as many as the two three four the Red Devils have had but plenty of time for them to score here and make things interesting before we go into the break. That's for sure. Central's got to stand tall here right before the break because this is where momentum swings is right before halftime when you can make a score right before halftime coming out and, and have that energy you know that you, you got that within six points or maybe within even four or maybe within four points three points even if they get the extra points hey, Jordan South there just tried to try to kind of slow her up there couldn't get the flag but again forced out wide not a lot of space to go and eventually ran down the cul-de-sec and only a short click gain there so now fourth down and they got to get the ball another about another three, four yards. They got 33 seconds. They're out of timeouts, but that clock stops after every play. So they do have time here. Central's got to make a stop right now. Up to the line here. There we go. Say so in there again. In there again. Keeping the contain. They got the first down and more. So North Plainfield's drive will stay alive. Osaya almost got in there. Yeah, she was close. I thought maybe, maybe she thought she was going to try a diving attempt for the flag there, but couldn't quite get the footing right. Now North Plainfield looking like they're going to get a score here before this half concludes. Central's just got to stand tall. They only got 25-8 left to go in this first half. Snaps off. They're going to run it here with Thompson. Oh, good tackle there by Tenor again. And Tenor's right in there again. Looks like the it's almost like she matches up better, George, because if you think about the hips of where the flags are, since she's shorter of the taller player, she has almost a better reach. That's a, that's a good point there. Oh, that one's almost picked off, but flag. the flag comes out there. I think they're going to get some pass interference. Yeah, oh, oh, Central it's red. They do Spot call of the it. Brunner had a chance at a pick, but I think there was some pushing and shoving there before that ball got there. Right at the spot that foul draws. They got, I mean, one 
one chance here to just push the ball a couple yards, see what they're going to do here. Given a gift here, see if they take advantage. And Central's got to see what they can do here on the goal line. It's not a normal goal line defense that you would see in the NFL, but I'm sure they'll rush more. Can only rush one past the line of scrimmage, but I'm sure they're going to keep kind of most people in the center here. Uh, ref's going to back everyone up a little bit. I guess the spot was maybe a little over ambitious before. <laughs> yeah, certainly. But still like about two yards. Two, two, three, four. Jesse thinks it's four, so we'll say four. <laughs> and there's a flag and... Full start. So now it's going to be more. So Another five back. Uh, to get better for Central. Yeah. That's what we want right there. I mean, it's a little miscue there from North Plainfield. I'm surprised we haven't seen more in Central. You know, this being their first game, you would expect maybe a little bit more miscues, but there really hasn't been any. No, they, like I said, they pick things up very quickly. You know, only three weeks of training, George, and it looked like they've been at it for a couple months now. And it's been like a normal team, you know, any other high school sport getting after every day. And you can see. The snap, couple blocks there. Running through. Did they grab her flag or no? Can't quite tell. Out of bounds. So, Central stands tall here. That's and we fun, will go man. into the half of the 18-6 lead. North Plainfield was celebrating, but... Oh, uh, yes, yeah, oh, so there's a mind. touchdown. So North Plainfield did score. Yeah. So this is more interesting than we thought. There we go. The one ref. Confusion for sure. Two ref, one ref motioned out of bounds and then motioned for the end of the half. And then the other ref belatedly motioned for the touchdown. Central defense out there still anyway, so yeah, I think it is going to be a touchdown because here comes the point after attempt. So it is 18 to 12. And now they're going for the 20. We'll make it a four-point game here. I look for a pass across here. She's going to start with a run. And she did get in, so there's two points right there, and this is getting a little too close for comfort here at halftime. Yeah, Red Devils can talk things over, get a little break, and, and see what they can do here come out in the second half. 18-14 here at the half. Stay with us. All right, welcome back to the second half of Central versus North Plainfield here. Girls flag football action. Central has the narrow lead 18 to 14 after the first half. They jumped out to an 18 nothing lead after a couple of big runs. I believe two were by Ma Ky Kyla Massenberg and one by Tenor. Tenor, right? Yep, Tenor, yeah. You're really laboring, huh, George? I was, I was late. I was late. <laughs> it's okay. This weather, though. I was though, trying to think of her first name. This, I, just, I just couldn't come up with it. Angelina. Angelina Tenor. There we this go. This weather, though, I think is going to be a very big factor. See, already as I say that, right? Look at that. There you go. Just a little drop like that. In it. And in uh, men's football there, you know, I touched on it in the first half. You could pick that up and run with it or do whatever you want with it. But women's football, that drops. It's a dead ball immediately. I mean, credit, look, credit. Not only the girls for being out there, the fans, Mr. Johnson, Tom Mack, the cameraman, everyone out there in the rain, George. There's a lot of people out there in the rain. No one, no one wants up. to, no one wants to miss the inaugural girls' flag football game. Oh, here we go. Oh, we got the flag. Oh, and there goes the flag up there. Good tackle there. Massenberg with some room. Looks like North Plainfield has kind of figured something out here on defense, though. We're not seeing as much explosiveness from Central that we saw in the first half. And well, that was Winter Thompson there, the, uh, the running back for North Plainfield with the good play there. But Massenburg, a track athlete as well, George, so new shoot coming with that speed. And it's a lot of pl different players on this girls' roster that also play other spring sports at the same time. So very impressive. That 
a lot to be doing two sports at once. Yeah, and two full commitments as well. There's the pitch there. What are they blowing dead for a false start? So they're going to back them up five here. Central not having the greatest start. Yeah, maybe look at Coach Wright selling there, shaking his head. Even he, even he couldn't miss a George. Especially if you're Coach Ransone, you better not miss this game. And extension to the football season, I'm sure he misses his football season. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you miss your HC swimming season, George. I don't think I miss it. To be honest. <laughs> it was fun. Don't get me wrong. It was fun, but I don't. I don't miss it for the swimming. Let's put it that way. Hmm. I miss my soccer, that's for sure, George. Yeah, I bet. When you're on a team that's winning, you definitely miss it oh, a lot yeah. more. <laughs> I told you, the most, the, most, the most beautiful game in the world right there. You're not wrong about that. Now, this, is, this, George, is New Jersey's 35th girls varsity sport. Leads the nation in that category. That's pretty remarkable. So here's the punt from Crowicki. That's a good punt. Big boot from Krowicki all the way down to the 40. See if Central can rally off that punt there. About, there's about 90 teams, too, in the state, George, already, which is huge. And that's because a lot of these teams I kind of had, like, club teams last year. This is the first real official kind of year. And Central, same as in the, in the men's side, in the big Central, big Central blue. And they're North Plainfield also in the big Central blue. So there's... Six teams in there to play f each team once, and then they play one at a conference team, which will be Westfield. That's Franklin Hunter Central, Metuchen and North Plainfield, Plainfield and South Hunter. It looks like they're gonna play North Plainfield twice as well. I was looking at the error, error, error on the error. Air. Yeah, error. Okay, so that's that's probably where they're playing Westfield. I assume. Yeah, they'll probably reschedule into that slot most likely, as they're supposed to play Westfield. But the, like I said, the original was supposed to have three weeks, four weeks before their, or three weeks before their first game. Oh, let's wait for this one first. Oh, she's still going. There's a flag. flag. But like I said, because of the Board of Education delay, they only were supposed to have two. But then, since the Westfield game got rained out, they ended up having that extra week where they were able to put in more concepts. But really, they only had one their second week, George, is when they really introduced the first full weeks of their full concepts, their, their playbook, and then had that second week, and they picked it up really quickly. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually, a, like, I'm completely amazed by how well this team's working. I mean, you know, that first week coming in introductions, just teaching everyone. Second week, now we got to, you know, start looking at the playbook, then then their mindset is let's prepare for Westview. Westview gets cancel canceled. Then they add in some more things, and they p and that's really that week, as Coach Dorr said, in that third week, that extra week they got where he th was like, wow, things really just took fold really quickly. Well, this team's looking good. I mean, they're in a bit of a rut right now as they've, they've let 14 go unanswered and see if they can turn it around. It's Winter Thompson on the run. Krowicki was there. That was a good grab up, yeah. from Croatia. Those are great hands there. So much coordination you need to be able to be able to grab that flag, George. Yeah, and especially now, like I mean, it's those it's flags wet. are probably soaking wet. Yeah, no and gloves too. I played flag a little bit when I was younger. You know, I mean, I was like six or eight, and I, they were hard to pull out. They're not yeah. easy to pull out, so. Yeah, well, when I, when I coach soccer with the little kids, we they put pennies in the shorts and act as a flag. Definitely a little easier to pull yeah, out than a the actual easier. flags. They still never get mine though, that's for sure. Central with the corner there, and that's Duda on the on the tackle. They they hold that up there, you know. They stick the head of a head of their uh, animal they killed or something <laughs> like that, you know. There you go. It looks like they might go for it here on fourth. This is a big opportunity here for Central to get the ball back. Hey, usually they punted, but this is close, like I said, you know. It's kind of when you're in that midfield position, it's like, what is a punt really going to do? I mean, punt probably can pin them back, but, you know, you got to risk it if you want the biscuit, as they say. It's a big throw downfield. This one pops high. Big collisions there. No flag, so Central will take over. Look at coaching staff there, really getting into it there. You know, Coach Joyce, 
talk to him. I was like, how are you feeling? Are you excited with this one? He's like, he's like, I don't care what it is. If it's a game of checkers against in North Plainfield, I want to win it. You know, he's a competitive <laughs> guy. And he said, at the end of the day, it's football at its core. And he's so excited to get the opportunity to coach this team as well as all the other coaching coaches on the coaching staff. You know, Tyler Rabel, Rob Martucci, and Coach Will, Will Pazeski. So they're just so pumped up. And you can see the girls feeding off that energy, George. So Central will be back, back out on offense here. They're running the same crew out there. You see very few substitutions as far as who's out there. It's you know, the same seven girls. And, and Brunner's going to start with a run real quick there, and that one is snuffed out by North Plainfield. Yeah, she ran right into the three right there, so it looked, looked like the odds were against her. Yeah, that's the thing. You can't do as much blocking as in men's football. Yeah, only with the one lineman, so. yeah. Basically, if they just keep two or three in the tackle box, running is very hard. You really got to get to the outside, and you got to be faster than those three that are in the tackle box there. To Norback. They flip it forward to Osaye. She still had it. That one almost slipped through her fingers, but... Yeah, that center is eligible to receive passes, George. I feel like if that was executed a little better, that is chance to fool him. I mean there. that could that is something that you know when I have that center center that's eligible to receive a pass you know, that can really throw some teams off there. I mean still working on some things first game but like you said it could be a real weapon. Now Saya, you know she's tall and she's also pretty fast. I mean you've seen the quick blitz and that was overwhelming in the first half for, for North Plainfield so well that one's almost fumbled away there and Flag pulled out, and so Central unable to do anything there on offense after their defense got it back. So North Plainfield is going to get the ball here off of another Croicky punt. Yeah, yeah, those three first possessions where it was just you know score after score, but it's kind of slowed down a little bit for them. But you know they can easily pick up momentum with the with the roster that they have. And these jerseys too, George. I really like these jerseys. I have to say, they look clean. Tom, when Tom came in, he was like, "Wow, he's like those jerseys are really nice." You know, they look like, they look sleek. I don't know what you think. I'm, I agree. Flag on that far side. So there's a flag. There's a solid punt from Crowicky, but I don't quite know what that's all about. I don't think the refs quite know either. Having a little bit of a debate huddle on the center line. It looks like they're going to pick the flag up. Yeah, you know, we still have five minutes to go in that little intermission, but the refs, you know, saw the rain. They said, let's get this show on the road here so they're not going to try to delay any more than they need to. You know, I, I, I was surprised. You know, I didn't look out of that clock. I looked up and I was like, wow. 10 minutes gone already in that <laughs> first half, you know. They just got in with the blitzing and the really the blitz immediately. Plays are what, three, five, three, four seconds, you know. If you have a really big play, it could be 10 seconds max, but it's only 80 yards, so, you know. You can cover that in what, like, you know, 20, 30 seconds maximum. Yeah. Probably yeah. like 10 for you. <laughs> Definitely not 10. Maybe for not, me. maybe not today, though. I'm a little slow. Looks like Brunner got that flag there. Good defense there from that was Brunner and Osaye, of course. Osaye is Brenner doing basically it on, every play. Brunner doing it on both sides. And Brunner is a quarterback for this Central Girls flag team, and, and she's a she's a freshman, and she's out there calling the shots. Calling the shots. <laughs> Only seen her throw a couple times. We've seen her run a little bit more. Generally been handing it off, but. With this rain, you don't expect to see a lot of action through the air. Yeah, especially with no gloves. I mean, that's like that's not easy, George. No, it's not. There's some speed from Winter Thompson. It looks like they got her. Only about five-yard gain there. I remember, George, my sophomore year, there was a the Red Devils played the Union Farmers, and it was just a torrential downpour. There's almost no one here, you know. It was Friday night under the lights, but we recovered luckily. I actually didn't announce I stayed and just kind of listened in. I mean, it was cr it was just the way it was played is so different, you know. 
when you got reins like that, it's just a, a huge change. It's like so much more run focused. I mean, it's, for soccer, it's mainly the wind that kind of plays things, but for football, definitely the rain. So it's just going to be another false start here. In the swimming, you could probably do rain or shine, though. Oh, for sure. <laughs> a lot of rain. It's just the thunderstorms sometimes will, oh, really? will be a problem. And water polo, definitely raining is a little bit more challenging. Um, it's inside, though, isn't it? Now, water polo can be outside oh, as well. Outside. Um, and it's only if you're looking up with a ball and you get get rain coming down on you. But even swimming and swimming, they have they have outside too. Yeah, I mean we we'll do outside a fair amount in different different seasons. So the summer season, we'll spend a lot more time outside than the winter season, obviously. So you know, rain can be a factor, but it's really just thunderstorms that are a problem. And I'll if it's in, if it's inside, you're good though, no. No, actually, um, a lot of inside pools have non-grounded systems, so they'll be outside. The lightning can strike it and can electrify the water, but oh. um, there's a lot of grounded systems. Newer pools are generally grounded systems, and those grounded systems are not going to be a problem, so we could continue. Here's the punt. Oh, yeah. Tenor's able to catch it. Tenor's got some room. Oh, but the flag is grabbed. There's some more sure hands on this punt return. He's a pool and girls flag football expert now. I wouldn't call me an expert. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see Central on offense again. Let's see if they can do anything to shake it up on this position. No points here in this half. 13 minutes now played, George. There's not been a lot of movement. See what Central can do here. They get another, you know, touchdown here. It's, it's getting a little bit more it's like they might have the game in control. But I mean, this game, I can tell. I mean, obviously, I haven't watched this game before, but I can tell this is a game that definitely can change very fast. Yeah. yeah. So Brunner's going to throw here. Big That's catch. catch by Duda. That was a nice throw from she, It looks like she almost got that flag before she caught it, but still, you know, that was like 15-yard catch there, so that's that probably halves the distance a little bit. That was a very solid throw, too. Small window to fit it into. Yeah, a second short scenario here. Or no, they got a... They got to get they, all the way yeah, they, they, first they got their yeah, first down, so now they got a uh, second and 15 here. It's the longest pass we've seen from Brunner. Brunner's got it again. He's looking downfield. Oh, finds good catch. Prowicki stays with it. So there's some nice movement here from Central as they're now starting to find some rhythm by throwing the ball through the air. Yeah. Okay. Little element of surprise. I think they're going to keep it on the ground as they've done all day with Tenor and with, with Tenor there and Massingfield, as you said. But instead they go, or Massenberg, excuse me, and, and with the rain, but instead they go through the air. And then they still got Massenberg there as a huge weapon if they want to use her. Well, that's what I was about to say. You get a couple nice throws. You hit him with a run again. They're not expecting it. There we go. Let's oh, see it. There it is. Massenberg. Oh, we jinxed her, huh? Ran into a wall. Maybe we shouldn't have said it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, if they keep that oh, going. It always happens to me. Always happens to me. Oh, yeah. I'm sure if they keep that going, if they keep that philosophy going, they could. She has that speed zone to get outside the edge quickly. You know, like it, you don't have a lot of space, but if you can make a quick beat on it, make a quick move, and get there, you know, there's no one's catching you. Yeah, I mean, but now, hard. as they get co closer, though, the end zone is less space in behind. It does become a bit more difficult, has to be said. Yeah, it definitely gets tricky out there. Oh, that was a dangerous one off the hands of Kowicki. That one could have been picked off, but. Massenberg looked like she was open maybe if she held it for a bit longer. Didn't wasn't kind of rush that one there when she came in kind of almost like the little post route there. You can understand the rush though, you know, with that quick blitz. It didn't look like anyone was coming in fast though on that one, so. Yeah, you know, freshman George, you know, they make a lot of mistakes sometimes. <laughs> That's... I mean, hey, we were all freshmen at one point. We all made those same mistakes, but... Here's Tenor. That flag goes flying there. That wasn't her flag, that though. Her she flag. got two flags still. Go. <laughs> She's got to keep running. She's going to. She's in the end zone. Touchdown, yeah. That's a touchdown. 
So that wasn't, that was not Angelina Tenor's flag. Yeah, she that was two flags. Flag. Yeah, All I of North Plainfield stopped. I mean, we had a good view to see that. They probably had a more difficult view, but every, I think most Central, you know, they knew she had, she had both flags. You, know, you keep going there. Clock's still running. Yeah, let's see what the refs do. I mean, everyone, everyone, even a lot of Central players thought that was her flag, but Tenor knew it wasn't her flag. Damn, this is an interesting predicament. And I'm sure the rule book doesn't completely address everything yet. This is a relatively new development. You know, that hasn't really been a league until this year, so. Well, George, nearly 21,000 girls on 913 teams across 32 states played flag football in 2022-2023. I guess I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're right, though. Like I said, 2022-2023. It's, it's new, it's new, new, new Jersey league. New Jersey, so I mean. I don't know, everyone's not completely familiar with this yet, but I mean this And for these referees too, you know. I'm yeah. not sure they've done many girls flag football games. <laughs> your boys, fans get your boys not liking it over there. <laughs> 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 hey see, you just said I don't like it. I believe that that sounded like the voice of Duncan Abbott. <laughs> bunch of bunch of guys down there. They're swimming boys, huh? They're swimming boys. Interesting crowd that is. I said, this is a tough crowd. I mean, this is a solid group out here, especially for it being so rainy. Interesting to see what it is on a nice day. They got Friday Night Lights game, George, actually, around May, I think, you know. That's going to be a big one here. Some, some, <laughs> some pretty, pretty strong words coming from the crowd. Yeah, they they still only need a couple yards for that for, for that first down, so they should be able to get it here. Here's Tenor. And she does. Staying with she it. got more. Angelina Tenor breaking oh. free. She didn't get all the way, but she got the first down. Yeah, she about six yards out there. Like I said, all, all they need a first down. I was gonna say move the chains, but you know, move the zone there. And now here we go. See, they repeat it again. Yeah, that's a new that's a new term. Move the zone. That's move the zones. There you go. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Tyler. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> and you needed it. I did need it. So, first down inside the 20. So that means they're inside the 10. Because they're about seven yards out from the end zone here. Just under seven minutes to play here. That's a high snap, but it gets right to where it needs to go. Here Good block from Tenor there. Runner goes through the hands. She, of like she, she had the hands behind the back, shuffling so quickly there. She got that low center of gravity, George. Really plays to her advantage. Because you notice, especially a lot of these girls are a bit taller. Like I said, you know, when you're shorter, you can grab at the hips easier, you know? Yeah. Tenor is having a will of the game yeah. today. She really was the catalyst of that first drive as well. You know, that big punt return got everyone pretty jazzed up. And it's been a long drive here, George. Sure. Almost yeah, five is, minutes now. This is the longest drive of the game I mean, for they sure. Had, they Open oh. Right side. Oh, my, almost intercepted, looking for huge. And that's there. considering their first three drives are, what, two plays maybe? Two plays and a score, so this has been long for them. Well, Hughes was but open. Some, the ball just didn't quite get there. Sometimes, though, you got to take these long drives. You know, score here probably would kill the game. You know, long drive, That's get points true. up on the board. That is true. They've melted a lot of clock. So, 543. There is a stoppage. I don't know. Now it'll be running. Now it'll be running. So, I, I think refs wanted to talk about something. Massenberg back in. Runner, Good looking over the center. Oh. Oh, Crowicki just couldn't quite hang on. Right in the bread basket, George. That's a too. perfect throw from Runner. That's something I, I probably would have dropped that too, not going to lie. Yeah, I mean, it definitely changed direction a little bit on Crowicki there, and it was kind of a little bit unclear as to who exactly he was going for. It's right in the center. I think there's a whole bunch yeah, of routes that kind of converged there. We probably look at Mr. Johnson's on-field cam. He probably had a good view of that. But, yeah, I mean, 
That's the type that's of ball you one. drop because it's easy to catch. It's yeah, you take your eyes off it. You know, you yeah, think you, you got it. Usually you think you got it and you start running, but she didn't have anywhere to go. Oh, a little pitch. Tenor she got staying it. Staying with it, and she's in. Touchdown on fourth down for Central. Angelina Tenor had to do it twice, but she got the second time done. So Central. We'll, we'll go up 10 points they here go for up sure. 10. They got to work on their sellies, though, George. Not really a lot of creativity there, but... I got to work on their sellies, and I got to work on my talking. My goodness, I've just been... That's hey, your first game back, you it's know. my first, first game, back. game back. It's been almost two months, hasn't it? Yeah, well, I did uh, I did the baseball. That was our, my game. Last game before that was March 5th, and baseball was Tuesday, 11, 10, 9. So a month, a month about. For you, probably like what, s about seven, six, seven weeks. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, gotta last, get that rhythm, last you know. game was a hockey game, playoff hockey game. Yeah, but watch on hills. Runner, that one's going through the hands of let's see the number on that one. Watch on hills, that and then as well. I did the game after that in Jersey Sports Arena with Mr. J when they fell to Manalapan. That was a rough one, George. That was, that was a rough, rough one. one. That was a rough one. It was quite close. It was very similar. I to thought they were gonna pull it out in overtime. I oh thought yeah. That, and then, then I had to take that bus ride back, and it was very, it's very quiet. That's very similar to their, um, their previous matchup with Manapolin earlier in that year. Similar o, o time heartbreaker. Overtime heartbreaker. Overtime, yeah. yeah. O time. O T O T. O T. You know, just my. Just, it's just how it is for me today, you know. <laughs> uh, we'll give you a break. Give you a break. It's the first game for everyone out there, and it's the first game for me. So some room there to run. For She's the out here. She's out for sure. She might have been out a little bit before that, but. Oh, Sia, even Good though she doesn't there. get that initial uh, sack, she does well of kind of splitting the field in half, and then they can get, as I say on the boys' side, the red hats to the ball there and, and converge on her. Yeah, Sia is definitely one of the most valuable players on defense. Here's a big throw down field. And yeah, they subbed her out, gave Kaitlyn Fleischer some time there. Sia was getting a bit tired. It's a long ball there. What's interesting is North Plainfield hasn't really put a game together of you know short passes that get little chunks you know the way Central has. So they've been, their offense has been very unpredictable. George haven't They're, really been able to. I mean, I think they're kind of lucky to have 14 points. Not gonna lie, but they have a couple of explosive plays. They had one good play, and then it was just the Red Devils with the flags and all that. But see what they can do here. Juggled a bit, and that one. Jordan South so out there, yeah. Jake Souse's sister. Oh, another course. another basketball player, Jordan Souse. Yeah, of course it wouldn't be a football game for Central without a Souse in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if you watched Central football, you knew how important Jake Souse was to that team. So it is good to see his sister out there being important for this one and. There's a big stop there again for Central. Like he's gonna, he's gonna be, got that one. He's going to be important to Muhlenberg as well in his That's next true. four years for sure. That is true. Turnover on downs. First one I think we've seen all day. Oh, we've seen, we've seen we've a seen couple. One? We've seen a couple. Oh, if you say so. Central's got a couple. And so there's been a lot more punting. But... Bit of a stoppage in play here. One minute warning. And Central has control here, so. So here's first down for Central. They have a lead of 10 points and the ball. A lot of control here in the end of the second half here. And here's Angelina Tenor with it again. And 
Looks like they were able to snuff that out early there, North Plainfield was. That rain just coming down harder and harder. It's raining in sheets out there now. Thank yeah, yeah, yeah. God we are in here. <laughs> <laughs> man, oh man, I mean, you know, you can catch it in the floodlight, and earlier you are just seeing it in the top bit of the floodlight. Now you're seeing it all the way down, basically to the field. So You've had some good analysis today. Uh, I've had some some great analysis. <laughs> I am just kicking these analysis. <laughs> like Doug thinks so, too. <laughs> yeah, cameraman Doug's real excited about the wonderful totally broken up analysis I've given today. We got so many, I mean, yo, I met my sophomore year with like six employees. Now we got so many, I forgot, I don't even know who Doug was. Now, 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 now I know him though. Yeah, I mean, this, this the business is growing here. It's great to, wait, great to see the way this I is I remember going. we hired this new kid, George Urquhart, my sophomore year. <laughs> and then after that, I just kept rolling in. Yep, here I am. So there's a knee. So there we go. Central will win their first women's flag football game ever. And they'll start the season 1-0, beating North Plainfield. They're going to drop to 0-2, and, and this was a team that Central was worried about. Yeah, so, I mean, look, George, top two, top two in the division of, of uh, Big Central Blue advance to the conference playoffs, and you win that. Got a chance to play there, the Jets facilities for the state title, George. Look out. It looks like. It's like Plunkett and Fleischer have maybe something in store for Coach here. Oh, he's moving. He's moving the other way. He sees it. <laughs> he sees it. He's saying no. Look out. Here it comes. He's already wet, you know. <laughs> he's dodging. <laughs> and the lights will flash. Oh. And Central has won. And the Gatorade bath. Missed everything. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that quite got there, but it is what it is. Central wins their first regular season game here. 24 to 14, the final score. And um, we're going to send it down. Yes, and then Mr. J, I think we're talking to Angelina Tenor there and Kyla Massenberg as well. Maybe talk to Coach Joyce as well. We'll see, but I can't wait to do another one of these games. This was fun. This was a fun game to watch. It's a great, fast-paced game. And Adds new elements to the game that we have known and loved for a very long time. So it's exciting to see this. Yeah, now I'll send it down to them, George. And we're here with the victorious Red Devils, Angelina Tenor and uh, Kyla Massenberg. Girls, first flag football game. Talk about the experience. Angelina, you first. Yeah, it was fun, like practicing in the pit. Um, it was muddy, you know, practicing in the rain, and it paid off, so yeah. And, uh, Kyler, first play from scrimmage, you break it. How did that set the tone for the team today? Um, setting the tone, it felt great. I feel like I gave my team a good lead off. I feel like we made it stronger and more confident. Um, we've been practicing in the rain throughout spring break, so it just felt more comfortable, really. It didn't feel like it was hard to do, so we went out there and we just did our thing. All right, here we go, girls. This is the first time flag football's been on in New Jersey. Angelina, what was what's the experience like being a part of this? I gotta say it's pretty electric to watch this from my side of it. Yeah, um, it's fun at practice. You know, we all come together, we practice, um, we have fun, leadership shows, and yeah. And to, to you, Kyla, where does this game go from here in terms of flag football, girls' flag football in New Jersey? Do you feel like you're at the grassroots of something special? Um, I'm not going to say too much, but definitely I think we're at something special, definitely on an upcome. You know, even though this is our first game and we haven't done anything, I think they look down on us, but we're confident enough to win, so we did our thing. And those were the victorious Red Devils, Angelina Tenor and Kyla Massenberg, now back up to the booth. Well, thanks so much for joining us here for the first ever women's flag football game. Super exciting for Central to come out with a victory there. And make sure to stay tuned in the future for more of these games, more action, more spring sports, all here on HCTV. From everyone here at HCTV, have a great night.